Julian Nagelsmann is the new manager of the German national team, but it's only on an interim basis until the end of the Euros. Now, historically, Germany have always been very interested in Jurgen Klopp, and despite the fact that he's previously suggested that he wants to see out his contract to the end of 2026, it does raise an interesting question. What if he actually was made the Germany manager this summer? And this got me thinking, who should the next Liverpool manager be? Now, I've got three different names that I'm going to give to you today, but before we get to that, it is worth noting that this isn't just about finding Liverpool a new manager. It's about raising a bigger question. What is Liverpool's tactical identity going to be going forward? Because all the way through Jurgen Klopp's time at Liverpool, there have been questions about tactical identity. So when Jurgen Klopp turned up from the Bundesliga in the Premier League, he was playing a really aggressive form of counter-pressing football. What that means is, is that a big source of creativity is going to come from Liverpool, not by what they do with the ball, but what they do without the ball. So they can get the ball forward into the more advanced areas quite quickly, quite directly. And if they lose it, that is going to present them a a really good opportunity to generate chances as well because if the ball is turned over the Liverpool players are really well situated to win that ball back and because the opposition are now in their possession phase there's a lot more space and chaos in the structure for Liverpool to be able to attack and the idea then is that a Liverpool player will win the ball back play one of their teammates through and they can generate chances in that way. Now this proved to be a good way of generating chances but not good enough for Liverpool to really challenge at the very highest level and so the question becomes where is the source of creativity going to come from for Liverpool at outside of this counter-pressing. And that's not necessarily an easy problem to solve because in order to have a good counter-press, you need to have a lot of midfielders in particular who are very good in the outer possession phase of the game. Often that can come at the expense of technical expertise. And so you can't simply just throw in better technical players in the middle. Those solutions have to come from elsewhere. And for Jurgen Klopp, those solutions came in the wide areas in the form of fullback. So we had Trent Alexander-Arnold on one side and Andy Robertson on the other. Now, Andy Robertson is a flying fullback, likes to get forward, likes to play the ball back across into the box. But Trent Alexander-Arnold, on the other hand, likes to come inside, likes to get into this half space and play these really nice curving balls into the box. And this proved to be a really good source for Liverpool of two different forms of creativity outside of the central midfield area. But this raises another problem for Liverpool because by pushing their fullbacks down the pitch, they're actually now leaving their defensive unit much more exposed particularly in these wide areas as well, you can open out space here that can be attacked by the opposition. Now, obviously this is fine if your counter press is working because the opposition won't be able to exploit that space quite so easily. But as soon as anything goes wrong with that counter pressing, then suddenly you are much more open for attack. Now, if you try and solve that problem by pulling the fullbacks back, you're losing a little bit of creativity in the final third. And there was a period where Jurgen Klopp tried to solve this problem by bringing more creativity into the central area. So he brought in Thiago Alcantara, who's a lot more creative from that midfield space. But again, this affects the delicate balance of that counter-pressing unit. As soon as that goes wrong, then you're going to be much more attackable. And that brings us to last season, where Liverpool famously struggled in the Premier League. And that was because they faced the perfect storm of things going wrong, both in and out of possession, mainly based around their counter-pressing because the fact that the counter press wasn't working so well and the Liverpool were sitting their fullbacks a little bit deeper and that gave them other problems. They weren't able to progress the ball down the field. This was the problem that Jurgen Klopp was trying to face last season and the solution to that problem was to move Trent Alexander-Arnold inside. Now what this achieves is that it gives Liverpool a way of progressing the ball from the centre of the field. As we know, Alexander-Arnold has a fantastic range of passing and by playing inside, it just opens up a huge amount more angles for him. It also allows Liverpool to have a little bit more cover in the middle if the opposition do break through but it does come at a cost as well and that comes at the cost of the fullbacks themselves because Alexander Arnold's real upside as we've already said comes from finding this half space and playing these crosses into the box over the opposition defense by sitting a little bit deeper it means that sometimes he can't find these areas quite so regularly and then on the other hand we've got Andy Robertson who we've already described of as a flying wing back who's now expected to play as an outside center back now, despite the fact that Liverpool are challenging at the top of the table after a really good start in the Premier League, they are still battling to find their tactical identity and a new manager could be a really good opportunity for them to solve these problems once and for all. And that brings us to the first candidate that I've drawn up and that is Julian Nagelsmann, the man who is currently Germany manager, but who is leaving them at the end of the Euros. Now, Nagelsmann is a really young manager. He did start out life as a professional footballer, but he had a very early injury, which meant he went and did his coaching badges. Now, he started out working through the youth systems like a lot of coaches do, eventually ended up as the assistant manager at Hoffenheim under Hoob Stevens, who was the first team coach, but then he lost his job with Hoffenheim 
in the relegation zone. And Julian Nagelsmann was promoted to be the full coach. What he actually did with Hoffenheim was really impressive. He saved them at the end of that season and then took them up to the other end of the table in the next couple of seasons. And that was good enough for him to get the job at RB Leipzig, who were going to be a title challenger. Again, he did really well there. He had two seasons with them, took them to the Champions League. In one of those Champions League runs, they got to the semi-final, which is the furthest they've been in that competition. And again, impressed everyone so much that he ended up with the top job in Germany at Bayern Munich. And this is why I think he would be a fantastic candidate for Liverpool. Not only has he coached at the highest level, but what we saw from him at Bayern Munich showed that he had a level of tactical flexibility that could actually help them in their current situation. Why is that? Well, rather than being a systems manager that is imposing a particular system onto his team and making the players fit into that, he's actually more of a principles manager. What do I mean by that? Well, I can explain it in the words of Julian Nagelsmann himself. He says in this quote, I give my players patterns that apply to every basic structure and every phase of play. It's important that my players put the principles we have into practice on the pitch at the weekend. And that's why I'm not going to go to the tactics board to show you what Nagelsmann's Liverpool would look like because I simply don't know. Because the point is, is that because his players have the correct principles in their heads while they're playing, they can shift between systems all the time. Why might he want to do that? Well, the quote goes on to say, the ability to be flexible makes a team very hard to play against because you can suit up your tactics for the respective opponent and it makes you much less predictable. I want to show you a couple of examples of this from Nagelsmann's time at Bayern. So this is a screenshot from the game against Villarreal in the Champions League in his first season at the club. This was actually the fixture that saw them get knocked out because what you can see from Nagelsmann's first season at Bayern is that he's got the team playing in the way that you might expect an elite team to do, using positional ideas in order to create space to attack. So we've got the wide players just stretching the Villarreal back line really far apart so you've then got space that you can actually exploit. Fast forward a season and the picture is very different. This is Bayern in the Super Cup in 2022. This is basically the German version of the Community Shield and what we've got is a Bayern who are much more narrow. So what I've done is I've drawn two lines on here just to show you how compacted that Bayern team is. The only width that's being offered is by the fullbacks here. The rest of the team now are really close together. That's a completely different approach to what we saw in that previous screen. Screenshot. The big question is, why might he have switched to this kind of approach? Well, I've actually got an answer for that question from Danny Olmo, who is one of the players in that Bayern team. And he talks about the fact that they're much closer together because the players rely on each other so we can give the game more speed. If we play more spaced out, we can't play as fast as the coach wants us to. Now that raises a question why Nagelsmann might want his team to play quicker. And actually Danny Olmo does suggest an answer to that question as well, because he says the reason why they play closer together, the reason why they want the game to be quicker is because we attract more rivals that way. Way, but we need to know how to play under pressure. If we succeed, we open bigger spaces and we're able to attack with more depth. So this is still about creating space, but rather than doing it horizontally across the field, it's now about creating space vertically. Now you may argue that by bringing all the players closer together, you've actually removed space because you've got now a much more compact back line, for example. But what Nagelsmann is saying is that by having his players much closer together, he can play much quicker passes, and as a result of that, generate space in a different way. So you can pass the ball around quickly, bait the players towards you as you play these passes, and then the result can be that you generate this space in behind now which you can exploit, and because everyone's much more centrally located, you can actually generate much more dangerous chances. All of which is to say that Julian Nagelsmann could be a perfect coach for a club who are struggling to find their tactical identity. Not only is he going to coach the players' principles rather than systems, so there's going to be a level of flexibility there, he's also going to be able to coach them in a number of different styles. So you've got the high positional ideas that we see at the very elite level, or something much more akin to this more direct attacking style of play which I think will work very well with Liverpool because once again you're allowing the players to be quite close together. You can still have your counter-pressing ideals but you're still going to be able to generate space in a very different way. But it could be the case that the Liverpool owners treat this situation as an opportunity to move from their more direct counter-pressing style to adopt a more positional possession-based approach which has proved so popular in Europe in the last few seasons. Which brings me to my next suggestion for the next Liverpool manager, Roberto De Zerbi. Now everyone knows Roberto De Zerbi, he's the talk of the town and he's going to be hot property next summer. He's already been linked to Real Madrid and Man City, but as we know, Guardiola is contracted to Manchester City for another year after the summer. So if Real Madrid don't come in for him, this could be the best opportunity that Liverpool have of getting De Zerbi. And despite the fact that Roberto De Zerbi does have a very different play style to Jurgen Klopp, there is one thing that unites the two of them, and that is that they both like really attacking direct football. But they go about achieving it in very different ways. Now we've already talked about how Jurgen Klopp likes to generate space through counter-pressing, so the idea is that you play the ball forward, 
and attack directly. If the ball gets lost, you can still use that out of possession phase to generate space for yourself. Because if you can win the ball back, the opposition will be in their possession phase, so they'll be spread out, there'll be lots of space for you to attack. The same is true for Roberto De Zerbi, but rather than by generating space by losing the ball in the opposition's third, this is about creating space by possessing the ball in your own third and opening up space in the same area. What does this look like? Well, you've all seen Roberto De Zerbi teams play. The centre-backs get the ball, they sit nice and deep, and they put their foot on the ball, they bait the opposition press in, because if you do that, you start off this series of shifts where the opposition players are going to step up to their man, and this is going to actually open out a huge amount of space. So, for example, if you draw these players in, and often what you'll see is the forward players for Brighton just dropping really deep to pull the centre-backs out, and what this does is this generates all of this space in behind, and now what Brighton are going to try and do is exploit that space, firstly through these really intricate passing plays, where they can move the ball quickly through the lines, but then they end up in these scenarios where the wide players can do these really nice inside to out runs to exploit that space. Hopefully you end up with a player with a ball at their feet facing down the field so they can find these passes. So it's all about generating space by baiting the opposition forward and then having the ability to exploit that space. What would this look like for Liverpool? Well, it wouldn't actually require that many tweaks away from their normal starting lineup. So McAllister we've got who can play in the midfield. He's already played with Roberto De Zerbi so we know he would fit into this space really well. We can have Soboslai alongside him in the pivot. Now we've already said that Brighton like to have their strikers abandon the first line. They're going to drop in deep to pull the opposition with them to create space, but also to help out in the central midfield area. So that requires a very specific brand of player. Nunes probably doesn't have the ability to play there, so we could bring in someone like Jota, someone like Gakpo. They'd be fine to play that kind of role. And then in the wide areas, we could use players like Bendo. We've got Diaz there already. And actually, Nunes played off the left quite a lot when he was in Portugal, so I think he would actually fit in quite nicely here, because what you want is wide players who are going to love these out to in runs. So it would be perfect for Salah, but also you could pick any of these players in that position as well. Now there may be some questions about Sobozai playing in the double pivot. It does feel as though you're taking him away from the areas where he can be really dangerous. But it is worth saying that once Brighton work through the first few phases of play, they end up in these situations where they're in settled possession. So one of their centre backs has the ball without the opposition pressing them. And this means that they can shift their shape. What they do is they usually push one of their eights forward. The other one comes inside and then the two fullbacks come in and invert. This gives them a little bit more defensive stability in case they lose the ball, but it also gets another player forward into the attacking line. But this is where the problem emerges because as we see now, we've got Robertson and Alexander Arnold who are basically playing as part of a defensive unit, which was exactly what we said is the issue with the way that Liverpool are playing at the moment. Now, it is worth saying that Stupinian, currently playing for Brighton, is able to get forward play the ball into the box. But Alexander Arnold is unlikely to be receiving the ball a lot in this half space where he's so dangerous from. And so there's big questions about whether or not this system would actually suit him. And this raises a question for the owners of Liverpool, because if you bring in a manager who plays a system that actually reduces the value of one of their better players, the big question is why would you go down that route? And this brings us to my final suggestion for Liverpool's next manager, and that is Xabi Alonso, a manager who needs no introduction to Liverpool fans because he was a professional footballer at Liverpool. Now, as you can see, Xabi Alonso has started out his career in Spain. He's gone through the youth system at Real Madrid. He did spend some time at Real Sociedad in their B team as well, but he's now tearing up in the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen. Why am I mentioning him as a potential new manager for Liverpool? Well, because he plays a wing-back system, and actually a lot of people think that a wing-back system is the solution to the Trent Alexander-Arnold problem. Because most people think that Alexander-Arnold would make a fantastic wing-back because he can get forward, and get all of the upside from that, but he also wouldn't have to do too much defending. But Alonso's system is a little bit more complicated than that because he has two very different wingbacks of two very different profiles. On the right-hand side, he has Jeremy Frimpong, who basically plays as pretty much a forward. He's often in the forward line holding width, and you can even sometimes see him attacking the ball in the box, almost like a striker. On the other side, they have Alex Grimaldo, who they brought in from Benfica in the summer, and he's going to play as much more of a traditional left-back, so he's going to be a defensive option. He's still going to have the opportunity to get into the wide areas here and play crosses in, but he is operating quite differently to Frimpong. So if Frimpong is being more attacking, then Grimaldo will sit a little bit deeper. Now, what this means is that Leverkusen, despite the fact that they look nominally like a back five on paper, they're actually much closer to a back four in possession because Kasunu, the outside centre back on the right hand side, will move forward to fill the space left by Frimpong. And then we've got Grimaldo playing as much more of a left back here. Now, let's imagine that this is Liverpool, this is Andy Robertson, and this is Trent Alexander Arnold. We've now got Andy Robertson playing much more like a left back. He still has the opportunity to get high and wide, but he's going to drop back and help out in defensive moments. For Alexander Arnold, he's now able to join the front line of the attack. And it may seem as though you're wasting Alexander Arnold to just play him as a high and wide player, but actually there's a degree of flexibility that takes place between Frimpong and Jonas Hoffman, who is the player who plays alongside him in that front three. 
Hoffman is actually just largely to support Frimpong. So if Frimpong comes inside, Hoffman will move outside. Or if Frimpong is in the advanced area, you can also see Hoffman dropping in to help out with the midfield to make a midfield three. So there's a lot of flexibility in here to allow Leverkusen to get the most out of Frimpong. And I'm sure the same would be true from Alexander-Arnold. So as we've said, he's really dangerous in these kind of areas. What Liverpool would then be able to do is have a player who would be a support player to Alexander-Arnold, fill the spaces that Alexander-Arnold leaves behind. And actually that player is going to end up looking very similar to Jordan Henderson, who played that supporting role for Trent Alexander-Arnold in the periods where Liverpool were at their best. So that's how Alonso might solve the Alexander-Arnold problem. But what does this look like for the rest of the team? Now, obviously the big difference here is we now have three centre-backs. So I brought in Konsa, who's played quite well this season, but Liverpool would probably be looking for an outside centre-back to play on the left-hand side if they were going to play this kind of system. We've got Canate playing on the outside on the other side of the pitch, and that's fine because we've actually seen this happening quite a bit with Alexander-Arnold inverting and Canate having to cover the area as well. So I don't think there'd be any problems with him playing that role. This system also removes one of the big problems that Liverpool have been facing, which is who do we play at number six? Because it's actually just a double pivot in the midfield. And as we said, that double pivot can become a midfield three if one of the forward players drops in to help out. But Liverpool do have plenty of options you could play in those two positions. So we've got Endo as well, Gravenberch as well, Bajsetic, Thiago, any of them could play in these sorts of roles. Up front, Leverkusen have Victor Boniface, who's an out and out traditional striker. So Liverpool could play Nunez. He's not perhaps the perfect traditional striker, but I think he would be fine in this system. And then alongside him, we have these two forwards. And I think this is where we're going to start having problems. We've already said that the outside forward on the right hand side is actually a support player to Alexander Arnold. And Mohamed Salah isn't going to be that player. We're not going to be able to see him dropping in and helping out in the midfield, or even really moving outside and offering a little bit more defensive support when when Alexander-Arnold goes inside. So this does raise a question about where Mohamed Salah would fit into this team. Now, Mohamed Salah is obviously a very important player for Liverpool, but when it comes to the question of who you should build a team around going forward, if the options are Alexander-Arnold or Salah, Salah is approaching the end of his career and Liverpool did receive a very lucrative offer for Salah from Saudi Arabia, which might be repeated again this summer, in which case you may be able to solve that problem by selling him on. The question then is who is going to play that support role? And we do have Harvey Elliott here who has played in a similar position. He's played in that Jordan Henderson role. So you could see him actually moving outside when Alexander Arnold comes inside, but he could also drop in to help out with the midfield as well. That just leaves us with the other outside forward on the other side. At the moment we've got Diaz here. Actually at the moment Leverkusen used Florian Witz in this role. He's a really exciting number 10, really creative player, can find passes through the lines quite nicely. And actually Alonso gives Witz quite a lot of freedom in this role. He can actually move from one side to the other. It's actually the creative heart. And this might prove to be a problem for Liverpool because they don't really have a player like that. He could, I suppose, use Elliot as that player, but as we've said, he probably suits the other role better. We could maybe even put someone like Thiago in there, but I'm not sure whether or not he's up to the physicality of that role, pressing out of the front. And so this might be an area where Liverpool would really have to explore their options in the transfer market. But this system, I think, would really suit Liverpool for a couple of reasons. On the one hand, Leverkusen are able to do a lot of positional stuff in build-up, which actually allows them to get control of the ball and move it down the field, which is something that Liverpool have perennially struggled with. And the other thing here is that when Leverkusen do get the ball under settled possession, they actually attack in a really exciting direct way that would suit Liverpool really well. We've already said that the outside forwards have a degree of tactical flexibility so the wide right forward can drop into the midfield area and then the left forward can actually just move across the lines quite considerably. This opens space for the wing back to get forward, the outside centre back pushes around and then you end up with this back four system. And this flexibility just allows the players to gravitate towards the ball so that they can actually end up with players quite close to one another in central spaces and they can attack in these really exciting ways where they're playing combinations between players third man runs, moving the ball into dangerous areas where they have a striker who can finish. So Xabi Alonso would offer a solution to the Trent Alexander-Arnold problem, but also playing a brand of football that Liverpool fans would really enjoy. So although each of these managers is very different when it comes to the style of football they're playing, any one of them would be perfect for the Liverpool job in my opinion. However, there's a bigger question at play here and that is what does the future tactical identity of Liverpool look like? And the Liverpool owners will have to sit down, decide what that identity is, and then select the best manager to encapsulate that vision. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.